worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from the book of Exodus. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I have commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them and of you I will make a great nation. 
But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, It was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading of Paul's letter to the Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Judea and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companions, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, 
whatever is commendable, if there is any excellent and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. <clears throat> but when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you.
Will our children and teachers please come forward? Holy God, we ask that you bless these children. They might have Biff as a guide, but I don't know where Mumsy will take them. <laughs> oh, Lord, we just pray they don't come back with a bull calf. So we ask, oh, Lord, that you bless them this day. In your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, so am I. Yeah. All right, Burkett, you got to go that way. Lead them with the cross. Yes. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, a week after I got here, seven years and a few months ago, I got a call from Ben Davis, and, and Ben Davis said, I, I need to take you out. We're going to go to the Waffle House, and um, I need to explain a few things to you about how things roll in Polk County and, and uh, Holy Cross. And, and so, so we, you know, I, I was kind of like, oh my God, this is going to be, uh, this is a really serious sounding meeting. And I, you know, I didn't know Ben at the time. So I mean, what, what did I know, right? And so anyway, um, we get to Waffle House a, a, over in Columbus and he says, now, you know, I, I see you, Jay Cargo. <laughs> now, you got to remember, that, that there are two sets of gods in Polk County. There are the horse gods, and there are the golf gods. They're both very, very, very fickle. It's just that the horse gods are very expensive gods. So he said, if I were you, I would get ready to pray to the golf gods, all right? So I said to him, I said, well, that, that's fantastic. I'm glad that you've kept me away from the expense of horse gods and, um, and that you've taken me to the golf gods. But, but how do I know that all of my prayers and supplications and propitiations to the golf gods will, will, will come to fruition? How will I know? And, and so he said right here, he says, you will never know. They will desert you when you need them the most. They will leave you a shaking, quivering mess, and there's nothing you can do but offer them more sacrifices to take away the yips. So, here we are in, in Polk County in 2023, and as Ben Davis correctly pointed out, we all have our own sets of interesting gods that we sacrifice to and that we, we put in some ways in front of Yahweh. Why? Because Yahweh's up on Mount, on Mount Sinai far away with Moses and we don't know where they went. And it's scary when your gods go away and you don't know where they went. Now, our reading from Exodus is one of these great readings in which the Israelites do the seemingly impossible, right? They, are, they have come all the way to Mount Sinai, right? Mount Sinai is the great holy mountain of God. It is where the burning bush was next to. It's where God talks to Moses. And Moses has gone up the mountain to receive important information, i.e. the covenant with this chosen people, right? And he's gone up there, and the people are anxious, they're worried, they're fretful, they're fearful, and they ask themselves, boy, this guy Moses, he's been up the mountain for a really long time. They don't know what's happened. So they go to Aaron, the high priest, right? I call him the, the high priest of, of idiocracy, right? So here he is, and, and they go to Aaron, they say, Aaron, your brother Moses, he's gone, we don't know what happened to him, and by the way, that, that, that God of his has led us out here into the wilderness to die, right? And so 
So Aaron says, and so they basically said, Aaron, do something about it, Aaron. What are you going to do? And Aaron says, I've got a great idea. Give me all your gold jewelry. Give it all to me. Now remember, Peter, it's Stewardship Sunday, right? So the priest on Stewardship Sunday says, okay, i got a plan. Give me all your gold. Give me all your gold and I will make you a god. I will make you an idol. And if you give me that, that gold, then you will have your god. And we can worship and sacrifice to the god. And we don't have to worry about where Yahweh is or where Moses is. Because we'll have our nice, neat little god made out of gold. Now, here's the great irony. The great irony is this. All of their gold earrings, all of that stuff, if you go back to Exodus 8, chapter 18, they got it all from the Egyptians because Yahweh was so powerful and put these plagues on them. And so the jewelry was a sign that Yahweh was always with them, that Yahweh was powerful, and that Yahweh would provide. And so they gave away the sign of what Yahweh was doing for them so that they could make a golden calf. You can't make this stuff up. Remember, it's Stewardship Sunday. So, here we go. The golden calf comes out of the uh, out of the fire and they've got this beautiful golden calf and they start to worship it and they start to eat and drink and revel and the word revel in 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 hebrew is really to have an orgy right they're they're eating drinking and having sex and they're doing all sorts of stuff with one another and god looks down and god says moses you better go down there you better go down there your people your people are making a mess of everything. you got to go down there and fix it, Moses. Right now, when you hear this, if I were Moses, I would have said, oh, no, 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 no. These are your people. And if I remember correctly, last time I was at Mount Sinai with the burning bush, you told me against my better judgment that I needed to go get your people out of slavery. Right? And of course, eventually Moses gets around to telling God, these ain't my people. Uh, these are your people. And by the way, they've been trying to stone me and kill me ever since we left Egypt. These are your people. But he reminds God and he says, guess what, God? You've put a lot of hard work into these people. You know, you created them, you chose them, and you called them out of slavery. It's, it, you have put so much hard work into these people. I want you to remember what you've already been doing, that you had a covenant. He says, remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Remember the covenant that you had with them. And remember your promises that you had with them. Now, I know that your people, your people are sinful and broken and problematic. But that's your problem. Remember your promises that you made long ago to your people. Now here's the whole crux of the problem of the story. It's really easy to forget what God has done for you, what God has done for us. It's easy because our lives are full of anxiety and fear and worry and uncertainty, and all of that fear and worry and uncertainty, anxiety, causes misremembering. They misremember who it is that brought them out of Israel, who brought, uh, brought them out of Egypt, through the wilderness to the most sacred place where God speaks to his people and they have misremembered because of all the fear and worry and anxiety and nonsense in the world. And guess what, folks? All that fear, worry, anxiety and nonsense in the world, it still is with us. And as Ben Davis clearly showed, just when you think you need the gods the most, 
they'll disappear on you and leave you with the yips 15 yards from the green. That's right. Now, I want us to push a little bit further. As absurd as it is that people would think that they could create a God that would replace the God of transcendent love and transcendent creation and transcendent redemption, as crazy as it is that people would forget that and think that they could create their own God in an image of a calf that God had created the real one of. As crazy as that is, the fact of the matter is that it's the same problem today. Fill in golden calf with something else, whatever it is. Now, if we look to Philippians, what Paul says is this. I know you all are struggling. I know that you all are struggling with suffering and problems and that many of you have fear and worry and anxiety in your heart. But I want you to remember that God is near. The Lord is near. Even when you think you are alone, the Lord is near. And then he goes on and he says this. Guess what? The God of all goodness who surpasses all understanding be with you now. What he says is this, you don't get to control God. That's not one of the promises of God. Now, one of the promises of God is not get to control God. It's that God is with you always and God loves you always and you get to choose to say yes to God's grace. God, the Lord is near and yes, he surpasses all understanding, but God's promises are rooted in the fact that he is always near and that he is always giving us his grace. I say this all the time. Our job here on Sunday morning is to remember correctly who we are and who God is for us and with us. Every Sunday, we go up to that Eucharist and Jesus in that Eucharist, we say those words, do this in remembrance of me. In other words, remember correctly who you are. Remember correctly what God is doing for you. Remember correctly that God created you, that God loves you, and that God is redeeming you. Remember correctly in spite of all the craziness in this world, all the nonsense and all the voices that want to build you a golden calf and tell you it's real, remember correctly who you are and what God is doing for you. The sacred journey in the wilderness it could be 40 years, it could be 80 years, it could be 3,000 years. But in the wilderness, it may seem sometimes like God is not near. But as Paul said, do not forget. Remember that the Lord is near. And remember that the Lord loves you and redeems you. And remember up at the altar of the Lord who you are and what God is doing for you. The good news is nobody needs to build a golden calf. The good news is you don't need to substitute fake gods for the real God. And the good news is you're here with all your friends on Sunday morning to remember what it is that God has done for you and is doing for you and how you are being created, recreated, loved and redeemed right here at Holy Cross. The good news is you have everything you need to remember who you are in God's love. Amen.
Please stand as you are able. And let us affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our hearts and with all our minds, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Jose, our bishop, and our priests, Robert, Molly, Randy, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this town of Tryon, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve us, to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphan, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Rebecca, Kathy, Sue, Judy, Pamela, Roger, Margie, Shirley, Jack, Edith, Bob, John, Meg, Joe, Rick, Jean, Jean, Patsy, Ben, John, Mary Ellen, Barry, our armed services and their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord our God. Hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom. 
and grant that we, thy servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, <clears throat> have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Jay King, a member of your vestry. I want to welcome you all here this morning. Um, as Father Robert reminded us, it is Stewardship uh, Sunday, so for that reason, we've locked the doors and we will be passing <laughs> the plates around until we make budget. I'm going to say something that might make Peter a little bit nervous, but. Um, your tithes and offerings are actually the least important thing of your, God, your service to God. What you're doing here this morning, the fact that you're here, that you are sharing in this fellowship, in this communion of the family of God is important. It is um, a signal that we are all here for one purpose, to love God, to love one another, to offer thanks for God. So as a member of your vestry, I want to, to thank you and encourage you to think of the ways that you can spend time with your brothers and sisters in Christ in this church. Find the opportunities. There, there are many week in and week out to connect, to be a part of the life of this church, and to extend the ministry and the reach that we have in our community. So I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. You're a blessing. And I also want to remind you that we have a big festivity after the service where we're going to dedicate our garden and we will have that uh, lunch following day. So thank you all for being here. Thank you so much, Jay. Love you, Jay. All right, Peter. Okay. Good morning. I'm Peter Franklin. I serve Holy Cross as treasurer. And at this time of the year, the um, head of the stewardship um, program so today we kick off our annual stewardship campaign. 
As many of you are new to Holy Cross, and quite a few of you are actually new to the Episcopal Church, I thought I would start off the campaign this year by just talking a little bit about what stewardship is um, and how we all participate. Each year at this time, we ask members of our church family to make a pledge of financial support uh, to meet our operating expenses for the upcoming year. Um, although we do have endowment funds, um, they only represent about 10% of our expenses, which means that every year we need to raise the other 90% um, from the contributions of our members. Um, and about 75% of that is done through uh, pledges made during the stewardship campaign. So to put it simply, pledges are what allow Holy Cross to cover our bills to pay our wonderful staff and make all the programs and ministries that we hold dear possible. While pledges are always important um, in that they help us make accurate financial plans, they're even more important this year. Later this fall, our vestry will be undertaking important strategic planning for our church. A big part of this work is determining what the right staffing plan is to meet our growing needs of our parish. Greg reminded me to make sure everybody knew that Brennan and Robert aren't going anywhere, so um, it's really a, it's a, it's a matter of augmentation versus uh, replacement. Um, so, but we know that more parishioners, more youth, more programs, um, and more ministries will require additional staff. And so to make these decisions, the vestry really will need to be informed about the level of anticipated giving for 2024. The theme for our stewardship campaign for 2024 is you belong here. Whether you are a lifelong Episcopalian or you newly arrived at the red doors, um, you belong here. Whether your family has been around long enough that towns in our community are named after you, and yes, I'm referring to my dear friend and mentor, Ambrose Mills, um, or whether you have just newly moved to the area, you belong here. Whether you're single, coupled, married with children, empty nesters, retirees, and every, um, every variation in between, you belong here. Whatever your life story and why ever you decided to give Holy Cross a try, you belong here. Our community is enriched and invigorated by your being here with us. Your pledge for 2024 is critical to Holy Cross, for Holy Cross to be well positioned to meet all of the opportunities and challenges that we have ahead of us in 2024. So thank you in advance for, your, for doing your part. If your name is on our mailing list, you'll be receiving a letter and a pledge card um, in the mail this week. Um, I think the best way of, of uh, returning your pledge card is to bring it in and drop it in the alms base in the collection plate on Sunday morning, but you can certainly send it or drop it off at the office. Um, we will also have updated stewardship information on the Holy Cross website where you can make a pledge online. If you have any questions um, about this uh, stewardship campaign, please feel free to talk to me, to Father Robert, Lori Walter, or any member of the vestry. So thank you. I'm now going to do a switch hats. Um, and so a role that I used to have um, here at Holy Cross was as chair of the Together campaign. And if you are new to Holy Cross, the Together campaign was a three-year effort by the entire parish. We raised over $600,000 and used that money to pretty much update, refresh, renovate every aspect of our church and our grounds. And so today, um, the, we have celebrated the successful completion of the Together campaign, but today really is the final aspect of that. We had delayed the celebration of the gardens because we are still waiting for the planning season to come in. So today is a special day as we dedicate our gardens um, and I'd like to, um, to just recognize some of the families who have made that happen. Um, Pagan Gilman, who is our driving force behind our, our, our landscaping um, and a member of our vestry, did a wonderful job of collecting the stories of, of the peoples um, who we're recognizing today. So I would urge you to read that. I learned lots about people that I've known for a long time. So please do 
read those stories and understand and think about the ways that Holy Cross meant so much to them. So um, the first family is the Wyckoff family and um, Dorothy's uh, nephew, John Kramer, is here with us. Um, so um, Jean and Dorothy, I didn't know, for instance, that, that um, Jean was a, a senior warden here. So um, I loved reading the story about Jean and, and I certainly knew many of the things that Dorothy did in the community. Um, we also recognize um, Carl and Jane Schumacher. Um, Carl is with us, as is his, are his daughters, um, Jan uh, Janet and Nancy. Um, a little typo on the top, it's, there's, uh, it's Jane Schumacher and her daughter is Janet. So um, we, we recognize the Schumacher family and thank you for the beautiful garden out near um, the flagpole. Um, our very own Neil and Eileen Barton. Um, I loved reading about Neil and Eileen's um, parents, and uh, they even annotated that a little further this morning. It sounds like Neil is a chip off the block from his father. So read about Neil and Eileen. And it's also very special that they recognized as part of their gift of the children's um, play area and the instruments. Um, the um, They re remember John Salmon, who was a uh, dear member of our community, and Barbara is here as well. So thank you to Neil and Eileen. Um, and then we also recognize the incredible work that um, Darren Meyer did um, to design and really rethink every aspect of the exterior of this, of this building. So everything from the hardscape. So thanks to Darren, you can now um, uh, get in to the church if you have uh, mobility impairments. Um, and the flowers and the gardens and the plantings are absolutely beautiful. So we recognize all of the work that Darren did um, in, in bringing this to fruition. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't also recognize Paul Zimmerman, who was my partner in crime on the Together campaign. I raised the money, Paul spent it. So um, <laughs> thank you, Paul. And Paul had a real vision for what the gardens, um, what the gardens would look like. So he really partnered with Darren on that. And then also a big thank you today to Jeff Carey, who is our chef extraordinaire, who has prepared lunch for all of us. So please do join us. After the service, um, where Father Robert will dedicate the gardens, we'll go outside and then we'll go downstairs for um, a wonderful lunch. So thank you all for being here. Thank you so much, Peter. I appreciate that. All right, a couple of notes. After the service, through those doors right back there, we will meet back there and we will have a dedica dedicatory uh, a set of prayers uh, throughout the garden, but we will start back uh, by those doors. So when we go out, uh, after the uh, postlude or during the postlude, we'll go out and we'll begin to do the prayers and we'll walk around the, the building where all of the, the uh, uh, memorials are and where the garden has been planted. Um, so, having said that, right after the service, uh, if you want to participate in this, uh, the garden dedication, meet right out uh, in the, uh, on the other side of the, the doors in the back. As um, as Peter also said, we will be having a wonderful meal downstairs, and it's, it's going to be fantastic. If you, if you don't feel like you can do that, but you want to go downstairs, just go downstairs, and we'll, be, um, and we'll meet you all down there after the service, uh, after the dedicatory service. Um, uh, just one more thing. Look at your bulletin. There are lots of things going on. Uh, uh, just on Friday, we had... We had over 60 people here for various things. Uh, so there's lots of things going on, and you can participate and be part of that. Uh, so look at this. Uh, as far as um, cocktails and cabaret, we're about halfway signed up. So if you want to participate and come that night, um, go to the uh, church office and sign up over there. Also, one more thing. Um, uh, Mike Menser, there is uh, uh, Jonathan Trebelko. Talk to him after the service. Uh, okay, um, and uh, Jonathan waved to him, okay? All right, fantastic. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
brauchen sie.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. To the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Amen. Molly, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Molly, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. I need to get you along.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into this beautiful world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.